Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to code your own pixel art so that when it finishes we have the super adorable avocado with the message, you the walk. This project should help you code your own pixel art too if you have your own picture, but if you want to follow along you can get this exact template by clicking on the link in the description below and you can code along with me. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is come up to the percentage and set it to 75 so I can see everything on one screen. Now I'm going to write my questions and answer them. I write just by clicking on the box and typing. So go ahead and write your questions and answer them as well. You can adjust the size of the question box like this if needed and you can also adjust the font like this if you'd like to. Now it's time to talk about the coding. We are going to do nine codes for each of these nine answer boxes. I'm going to code each one of these. When I code, I need to tell the computer three things. I need to tell the computer the column that this box is in, so it's B, and I need to tell the computer the row that this box is in, it's four, five, six, and seven, but I just use the first one, which is four. So I need to tell the computer B4. Otherwise, it doesn't know what box I'm coding. Um, so those are the first two things. And then the third thing I need to tell the computer is the answer to my question, which is nine. So for example, this one is B4, and the answer is nine. This one is B8, and the answer is three. And this one is B 12 and the answer is February. That's really all we're doing with the code. And here's what the actual code looks like. I recommend writing it down. Equals dollar sign column dollar sign row equals answer. The column and row are what we were just talking about. So column B row say four for this one. Answer is the answer to your question. And then you do just have to type those symbols in there as well. For example, the code for this box would be equals dollar sign B dollar sign four equals nine. This one will be equals dollar sign B dollar sign eight equals three equals dollar sign B dollar sign 12 equals February. And that's the code. So with that being said, let's go ahead and open the coding window. I'm going to click on this box this is the one I want to start with. Come up here and click format. If you don't have this window, click on this and open conditional formatting. And this is the coding window we will use. If it ever goes away, that's how you open it back up again. Okay, the first thing that we are going to do is tell the computer what color we want it to choose. And if I click here, I might not know which colors I want, but if I click on the actual avocado, I can find, you know, let's say I wanna do the dark brown I usually will click on the picture just so I can see where that's located, just so I know which one it is. Now let me click back on the box I'm coding. And I'm going to come over here. I start at the bottom. Like I said, I start with the color. I want it to turn the darkest brown that's in the design. Next, I'm going to write the code. Click here and scroll all the way down to custom formula is. It's the last option. This is where we write that code that we were just looking at, telling the computer the column and row of this box and telling the computer that the answer needs to be nine. Equals dollar sign B, that's the column, dollar sign four, that's the row, equals nine, that's the answer. I keep this window open, but I'm just gonna show you real quick. This code is technically done. I told the computer, if there's a nine in that box, I want you to turn it that shade of brown. And if there's something else or nothing in the box, do not change its color. But if there's a nine, turn it brown. And the code works, which is great. So the code is successful. What we want to do now is just add on the browns from the avocado to the existing code. So we're not coding these boxes. We already did the code. We're just going to add on pixels from our picture. To do that, we'll open this back up. We're going to do that last step, which is the top apply to range. Click on this, a window pops up, we're going to slide it over. The range is 
what do you want to turn brown? How many boxes and which boxes? This box is already selected. This box is the B4 to B7. And I want to add on some others. To add on, I'm going to hold down the button Control on my keyboard. Or if you have a Mac, hold down Command. Then I'm going to click on the other ones that I want to add to the code. Notice that that nine box is still selected. That's important. I want that to be part of it too. I'm holding down control so that I can add to the code without deleting others. If you click on something you don't mean to, just click on it again and it'll take it off. Now that I have this box and all of those selected, I can lift up on that control or command button and I need to do three steps. First, I need to hit OK on the range. Next, I need to hit done on the code. And then finally, the step is really important. Come up to the paint bucket and hit reset. Everything's selected, so click off of it, and now we can test it. Come up to this and delete the 9 by hitting delete or backspace, and notice the brown disappears. Come back, put the 9 in, and you have to click off of it for the brown to come back. So that code worked, and I can see it over there. I'm going to take the 9 out so I know what I've coded and it doesn't confuse me. Let's do the darkest green next. And I do like to click on it first, like I said, just so I can see where it is. It's the third custom color. It's also the darkest custom color, so it's not super hard to find. Now I'm going to click on the box I'm actually coding, which is not actually that little green box, but the three box. I am going to click add another rule. Remember, if you lost this window, you can just open it the same way we did before. Add another rule, and we'll do the same thing again. Start at the bottom, Tell the computer what color you want it to turn. I said I wanted to do the darkest green, which is this one. Now I'm going to write my code telling the computer the column and row of that three box there and telling the computer that it needs to equal three. Equals dollar sign B, that's the column. Dollar sign eight, that's the row. Equals three, that's the answer. Technically that code is done, and I just want to add some of these dark greens to the range. Click on this, slide it over. I'm going to do all the dark greens for now just to get them over with, but I could just do half of them if I wanted to because I have a lot of questions and I only have seven colors. With these letters, you can see that it's a mixture of the darkest green and the less dark green. And then here too, there's kind of this shading going on where we've got the dark green and then we've got a slightly lighter green. If I were to accidentally click on, you know, say that one, it would be okay. I could unclick it too, but what I mean to say is that if it's hard for you to tell the difference or you're not, you know, you mix a couple of them up, that's okay because it'll still look nice when it's done. And these colors, the dark and the slightly less dark, they're just for shading purposes. When I'm done, I'll lift up on control. And remember, there are three steps to do. Try to remember what they are. Step one is to hit OK on the range. Step two is done on the code. And then what's that step three? We're going to reset the paint bucket. That step is super important. Click off of it, and now we can test them both. Nine, three, click off full avocado. And then just delete the numbers. If you look over there on the right, you can see that these two both have codes associated with them. Coming down to our next one for February, I'm going to do this light green, but I'm not going to do all of it because we have nine questions total and seven colors, which means if I did one color per question, the avocado would end early. And so I can split some of it up. I can do part of it. Click add another rule. And I was just looking at that color in the paint bucket so that I could find it. And now we'll write our code telling it the column and row and the answer to my question. Equals dollar sign B, dollar sign 12, equals February. I want to show you something. It turned white to show us the code isn't correct. February is a word, not a number. You have to do something special with words, which is that you have to put quotes around it just like that. Now it turned green to show me that it worked. If it's a word, put quotes around it. If it's a number, you don't have to. Now come up to your range, and I'm going to add in some of these light greens. 
I like to keep them spread out from one another so that when the avocado is appearing little bit by little bit, it's a little bit more mysterious and just looks more magical. When I have a few of them selected, I'll lift up on control and remember those three steps. Okay on the range, done on the code, and reset the paint bucket. Click off of it because a lot is selected, and now we can test. There's our avocado. Codes are popping up on the right as we click through. Let's click on Mercury and do another one. I am now going to do this kind of, I think of it like a grass green. So it's this nice, pretty one. It's not in the um, words, I don't believe. So it's the first green. So let me click on this word. Yeah, the word is a different green. So it's just in the avocado. I am going to do about half of this one. So click on Mercury because that's the code we're actually, or the box we're actually coding. Click add another code and click down to fill color. And I'm picking that beautiful grass green. Now we'll come down and write our code. Equals dollar sign B, that's the column. Dollar sign, let's see here, this one is 16. Equals mercury. And I'm putting mercury in quotation marks because it's a word. Now I'll apply to range. And like I said, I'm going to do half of the greens. Since there were seven questions and nine, or sorry, nine questions and seven colors, that means that I would split up a couple of the colors across two questions. Once I get to a point where I have the same amount of questions left as colors on the board, that's when I can do kind of the whole thing. Lifting up, three steps. Okay, done. Reset the paint bucket. I have one, two, three, four, five questions left, and I have one, two, three, four, five colors left. That means for each question, I'm going to do the full color. So if I decide to do this green for the next one, I'm doing all of it, including all of these. You can see, I think that one was darker and should have been included in the old code. I could add that back in if I want to, or I could just make it this other shade of green and it would look fine. But if you wanted to add it back in, I would find that color, which is here, open it, click add another range, and then just include that one in there. And that's how you can add pixels in if you forgot them. So now I'm going to speed up the video and I'll do these last five and then we'll check in at the end and see how it looks. When we're all finished, there should be no pixels left. If there are pixels left or other common mistakes, it's very normal. You can click on this video there and it'll show you how to fix any mistakes you made. Let's go ahead and cycle through these and you can see on the right that the codes are popping up so I can open them if I need anything. But let's go ahead and close this window now. We'll put our answers in and see how it looks. And there's our finished avocado. Let me know if you have any questions. Check out this video for troubleshooting, and I hope you have fun with this project.